And I'm sure people will attack me for even watching this video. What a coward. Whenever people hit me up to like talk about debate content, I'm like, don't do it. I tell them all the time, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't talk about debate content. It literally makes the debate content thrive to be discussed. You can only feed the beast further. But this one also is a good, it's a good video overall. And once again, I'm just going to mention this again. I don't think this is exclusive to Vosh. Hey, I think that Vosh's community engages in this. How's it but going? I hope you're doing well. Vosh's community engages in this. But the reason why I think he's using Vosh as an example is because he has experienced uh, that. This video is set out to criticize too green all that stuff is. Check out how green everything is. Check out how green all that stuff is. So a little while ago, I released a video called Solving the Debate Bro Problem. This video is set out to criticize two left-leaning political live streamers, Vosh and Xanderhal for behavior that I found problematic. I looked at a few different examples. So Vosh's interaction with the smaller video essayist, Professor Flowers, Xander Hall's video that was critical of myself and some other lefty content creators and various elements of their respective communities behavior. After the video's release, Vosh and Xander Hall both reacted to it live on their streams in videos that have since been uploaded to YouTube. They had many criticisms. I went on to Vosh's stream to talk with him about some of those criticisms. Vosh also released another video on the subject titled solving the video essayist problem, which was critical of my video's argumentation or lack thereof, some say. Some say that, not me though. I would never say something, I would never say that. I've linked all of those in the description if you're a sort of a creep that wants to watch all that stuff. The video's reception was, well, divisive might be the right word. On the one hand, you had a lot of people who understood where I was coming from, who empathized with my frustrations about these spaces or just were able to have a laugh at the way I went about highlighting them. Vine boom sound. Vine boom sound. Vine boom sound. Vine boom. On the other hand, though, a lot of people didn't like the video. This dislike ranged from, hey man, normally like your videos, but this one was a miss. This wasn't it, Chief. Mr. Chief, this was not it. Mr. Chief. Halo 7. Marriage. All the way to, this is the worst video essay of all time that should be wiped clean from the internet along with your channel. This is something that I see all the fucking time, maybe not from Vosh's community, but from other communities that I have ever made the mistake of engaging. It's just a very common tactic of how people love to interact with content. Everyone does this, okay? Delete your channel, delete your channel, delete your channel, delete this video, delete this video. It's no motherfucker. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. And then when you do end up deleting the video, or if you do actually end up taking the video down or anything like that, they will literally turn around and celebrate it. Be like, look at this fucking dumbass. He deleted the video. What a fucking idiot. That's an, that 100%. He's a fucking dumb idiot bitch. You fucking dumb bitch. You're so stupid. You delete the video. Now delete your channel. Because it was never about stopping misinformation from being spread, even though that is what someone might say. Oh, you deleted it. You're hiding something. You're hiding how stupid you are. What a moron. This is why, what do I do always? Whenever motherfuckers, whenever motherfuckers do the whole... Backpedal, 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 backpedal. You're backpedaling bullshit. Why do I fucking clamp on dudes that always say you're backpedaling? I am creating live content. And a lot of that is immediate and, and, and genuine reactions to stuff. In that circumstance, sometimes I get things wrong. Sometimes I'm just reading the chat and I'm getting false information from the chat. So when I admit that I was wrong immediately after processing information, that is not backpedaling. And I hate that attitude. That attitude is awful. Backpedaling, backpedaling is like an insanely cancerous attitude, which is precisely why I attack that kind of attitude all the fucking time in this community. It's one of the ways that I try to foster this community in the appropriate direction that I see fit. But you correcting yourself is a sign of weakness and debate bros take that as a dub. Exactly, there's a term for it, backpedaling. It's super toxic, it's super annoying. I don't give a fuck about functionally winning a fucking debate. I care more about getting the accurate and adequate information out, okay? And making sure my analysis revolves around correct facts that I am working with. Accountability, which is why I love when people change their minds. This is the reason why I do what I do because I want people to change their minds, right? Remember, you changed my mind on CRT. I used to be heavily and aggressively against it. Fuck yeah.
Okay. It's not about being right, but getting it right. Thank you. Exactly. Also, it's about running the top of the hour ad break. Here's the one minute ad break now. I forgot to run it 20 minutes beforehand. The latter response was basically the takeaway from the streamers themselves. Thank you, Gacho sure Marks, for the tank of the subs. I say to all of you with full sincerity that this is quite possibly the worst takedown I've seen. It's really disappointing how much of the online left can be convinced by such stupid arguments if they're said by somebody with a nice mustache and some bisexual lighting and... and, and like, for the record, I don't know what they're even discussing here, okay? I don't even care. I don't even know half the fucking drama that they're discussing. I don't know what Noah's original video was because it was about, like, Vosh and stuff, and I was like, I'm not touching that. I'm not fucking watching that. So I want to, once again, respond to something here while I'm having this conversation. Nothing. By the way, he has bisexual lighting. Uh, I guess he's just upset that he can't grow a mustache or something. I don't know who the fuck this dude is. Don't know anything about this guy. Don't want to know. Not relevant in the grand scheme of things. I want everyone to keep their eyes on the prize. The larger conversation about toxicity in debate spaces. He's the underdog debate Eminem. Don't hate. He will go rap god on you. Oh man, I'm sure he the, has uh, already gone rap god uh, on show me. Show music in the background. Vosh at one point even offered me a cash reward of double the video's ad revenue to take it down. Uh, if Noah Samson. Yeah, Ethan took down the Jordan Peterson video. And people, because people were like, take it down, you're platforming him. And then they were like, wow, he's trying to hide this conversation with Jordan Peterson. There's no winning. Like, it just doesn't matter. There's no winning. Just do what is right. Deletes the video and publicly retracts the information within. Then he can screenshot the AdSense info within it. And I will give him money so that he doesn't lose a cent from do uh, deleting it. I'll double it. So naturally, I took it down. I got the money and then I put the video back up. I plan on doing that a few hundred more times. Boss just keeps paying me. Unlimited money glitch. Mother load. Just kidding. That whole thing was a joke. I can't take money from the CIA. I still use TurboTax. It would be a <laughs> mess. But okay, why are we here today, Noah? Why are we talking about your last video? Grow up, move on. Well, I wanna to talk today about what I experienced in the aftermath of making it. I wanna do this because after I released the video, frankly, some weird stuff happened. And I wanna talk about that and connect the weird, bad stuff to the experiences of other people. I want to outline how this happens, what the backlash from debate streaming communities looks like, what's at stake. The fucking money thing is like bravado. God, it's so soy facing too. It, 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 I'm sorry, it is lame as fuck to be like, <laughs> I will intellectually destroy you. And then everyone's like, oh, fuck yo, dude, he's sick. I do it too. I do it too. We just, we all want to be fucking entertaining. And we have like these little cloaks that we put on. We, we play this song and dance, okay? That is our persona. But like, when you pull yourself out of that for a second, you're like, Ugh, really? Uh, anyway. For some of the people who experience it, and maybe. What but he was be done definitely joking, eventually. I think. Probably not today, but someday. So yeah, super vague, but um, I will get into it. Right after, we quickly take a moment of silence for all those lives lost during that one thing. And then we take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Casetify. If you like having a phone that isn't all fucked up and gross and weird, just have an skipping anti- it. I don't know. Skipping okay, it. Back skipping to the video. his ads. Fuck ads. Okay. Sorry. All right. So after all of the events that I went over, which was my video, the responses, the debate, and the other content, I started seeing one comment pop up in different places on the web. The comment says that basically in my conversation with Bosch, I walked back my entire video. Admitting Dude, again, oh, he literally walked back. He walked back everything. It's like, I'm literally fucking staring into, like uh, I'm staring at a mirror. It's always, it's always the same. This is also when you're dumb enough to actually fucking engage with uh, a, a community that thrives on debate and the drama that comes from debating. Okay. Oh, you walked it back. You walked it back. You walked it back. YouTube comments on a drama video. Yeah. It's just like, ha ha. You walked it back. You admitted you were wrong. Just admit you were wrong. You walked it back. You fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, anyway, hold on. Admitted to it being full of lies and misinformation and should therefore delete the video. I've received versions of this comment hundreds of times, maybe thousands at this point, if we're counting tweets from not only fans of these creators, but this? from the creators themselves. I've received versions of this comment hundreds of times, maybe thousands at this point, if we're counting tweets from not only fans of these creators, but from the creators themselves. So is this what happened? Did I walk back my video in the debate? And at first I wasn't sure. So I watched it back only to discover that, um, no, 
this did not happen. In my conversation with Vosh, I conceded three points, and none of these points stand in the way of my video's main arguments. The driving issues behind my video, the reasons why I made it, were Vosh's treatment of Professor Flowers and Xander Hall's problematic language. The three points that I conceded in the debate had nothing to do with these. It has been a little while, so if your memory's a little hazy on it, I encourage you, go back and watch the debate. That is what happened. And yet, here we have countless people jumping into my comment sections to self-righteously proclaim something that is demonstrably false, and using this falsehood as a justification to force my hand into- Why are you giving this guy clout? Wait, what? I like him. I like Noah Samson's thoughtful videos a lot. And the reason why I'm watching this video in, sp in particular, uh, I think it addresses like the way that debate communities operate and the way that a lot of content creators operate, as a matter of fact, uh, on the internet and why it's so toxic, especially when it's when when the ultimate goal is about like, you know, having a united front that criticizes attacks, right wingers. And a lot of people will literally turn around and be like, yo, that's so dishonest. We need to be cleaning up our own community. It's like, no, no, you're you're fucking just trying to uh, you're trying to infiltrate and subvert and focus attention to other leftists over marginal fucking disagreements that you may or may not have that is turning into much larger problems because that's just the way some people operate. That's just the way some people make fucking uh, content. I don't like that at all. I hate it. I don't like it. ...into deleting a video. That seems a bit weird, right? Lest this come off as me saying that no, I did not get owned actually, as I slowly shrink into a corn cob. That's not true. I, I did get owned. Roughly a million people on the internet think I'm the worst video essayist of all time. And I'm fine with that. Honestly, I am. What I'm not a big fan of though is, is being bullied. And sometimes it's hard for me to tell when that's happening. And I have since realized that it did happen here. Now here one might object, well, Noah, you went onto the debate stream and you were conciliatory. You didn't argue for your positions well, and you backtracked enough points that if people got the impression that you don't believe what you said in your video, can you really blame them? And initially, I actually agreed with this point. I was like, you know, yeah, I guess this is just kind of what happens when you go on debate streams. Especially if you go on unprepared and unseasoned in the art of debate, as I was and still am. I'm not coming back on, guys, so don't ask. I should have known better than to go on that stream. Ultimately, this might be my fault, or so I thought. When I actually took a step back, though, and thought about it, and then watched the debate a few more times, I realized that no, that's bullshit. People should not be allowed to lie about stuff just because I didn't go full debate lord in the debate realm. That should not be standard procedure. I entered that conversation attempting to seek understanding. I felt bad, frankly, after seeing how poorly my- Guys, stop. Like, listen, listen, listen. You're, you're literally forgetting the main point of this video. The video hyper focuses on Vosh because that is Noah's experience with Vosh. But you're literally doing the thing that I'm fucking annoyed by, which is using this as an opportunity to just be like, Vosh sucks. Vosh sucks ass, dude. Fuck Vosh. Vosh is terrible. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, stop feeding into the toxicity, okay? You're doing, you're, you're doing the thing that like I am fucking annoyed by. Oh my God. My video was received. Like what the fuck? fuck is that? And how if my goal was to put a stop to the bad behavior I tried to call out, then the video was a failure. I went on wanting to try to like, I don't know, figure out what went wrong, I guess. And when this audience of people saw me do that, what they saw was weakness. And they took that weakness as a sign to go on the attack. And that's what they did. They took whatever they could to discredit me. And now because of this, they feel justified vindicated even in bullying me into silence. Cancel culture, the woke Twitter mob strikes again. <laughs> One thing that's been brought up a few times is the question of where do we draw the line between criticism and harassment? Where does warranted punishment for having a bad take turn into abuse? I think making this distinction at times can be difficult, but I think in the case of larger streamers like Bosch, there Seeing the video, honestly, the harassment seems very exaggerated. I mean, dude, I can't speak for Noah's personal experiences, but are you fucking joking, dude? Let me tell you something. Why do you always, if you're in this community, why do you always say, Hassan, please stop getting fucking into the same stun locks over and over again? Why are you still constantly and consistently addressing the same points over and over again? Why do you think, why do you think we, why do you think I'm, I, I find myself addressing the same talking points? Non fucking stop. It's because this attitude is exactly what is directed towards me on a daily fucking basis. You think it's because I'm the worst piece of shit on the planet that I got canceled 18 times this year so far for buying a car, 
uh, I don't know, making money, uh, buying a house. You think those were all legitimate grievances that keep getting brought up over and over again? Or, for example, uh, uh, fucking being, I guess, in support of Russia, even though I'm not, despite the fact that I've literally raised money against Russia. Doesn't matter. Still support of Russia. Fuck you. Who cares? You got owned. Why do you think I address that stuff all the time? It is fucking cancerous. It is absolutely cancerous. It fucking sucks. And it's all about controlling the fucking narrative. And people uh, on the internet, specifically people on the internet that do this all the time, have a lot of goddamn time on their hands. Well, oh, you can't take criticism. You can't take criticism. React gate. That was another one. You can't take criticism. You can't take criticism. Bro, there's criticism I can take, which I have and admitted I was wrong on and moved on from a, a year ago. And then there is like cutting as many fucking videos as you possibly can over the course of fucking two years and still relitigating things all the time and turning it into more content. I'm not defending debate at low culture, but Vashki still also a shit ton of ha uh, hate, just like yourself. Problems that, unlike you, he's somewhat guilty of doing it to others. That's what I'm saying. I've told this to Vosh directly in fucking DMs too. I was like, bro, listen, you know this better than anyone else. Stop doing this to other people. It is incredibly trendy to, to fucking shit on Vosh. He says a lot of fucking things and he has he said a lot of weird like things. He's like really into anime, okay? So it, it, it is super easy to just like cut a fucking video as a normal person. Any normal person that looks at like 90% of the thing, the agitprop out there against him will be like, okay, fuck that. That's crazy. This guy's crazy. So it's wild that he would like you know, turn around and do similar things to other people on the left, especially what the fuck, especially someone like myself who avoids talking about it deliberately and on purpose, despite knowing full well that it's a super easy fucking slam dunk. He's really into anime. What does that mean? Yeah, you know, you know how that works. <laughs> if you're really into anime, you know that. All the hate you received since I started subbing last summer is absolutely insane and unjustified, but the fact that you keep fighting the good fight keeps me going and makes you love you even more. Thank you. There are factors about their medium which can elevate standard criticism into harassment territory quicker and more easily than creators in other mediums. It can also sustain this harassment for longer than it might elsewhere. And this is really more of a theory derived from what I've seen these creators say and my own experiences. But like, okay, you have a few thousand people watching you, giving you positive feedback, and that feedback is reciprocated. The chat's like, Oh man, man, they're doing you dirty, man. It's super fucked up what they're doing to you, dude. Oh, they're really bad. And sometimes the streamer's like, you know what? Yeah, they are fucked up, dude. Fuck these guys. I hate them. Spit on them. And the chat's like, yeah, yeah. A lot He's, of times this, the chat wants- This is literally real. I'm gonna keep repeating this, but everyone is only gonna see this as like, oh, Hassan is like shitting on Vosh or whatever. I feel like we're doing the lol cow shit again. Like we had this conversation yesterday when we were talking about speed. And I feel like we're just relitigating that exact same convo right this very moment, right the fuck now. It's just drama baiters that are like, yes, yes. And that is fostered in the blood sport communities, unfortunately. It just sucks. You're not there because you have like a morally consistent perspective. You're there because you want to see blood. You want to see the fucking best debate lord destroy all the other debate lords. You're there for the fucking blood. And that's why you can actually win over those people in debates. Those are the 20% that actually switch sides on a debate. Whoever is rhetorically better, whoever can rationalize logical fallacies better in a fucking debate. He talks about it too always, about how his chat just wants blood sports, etc. But yeah, I think his discussions, he misinterprets people and argues semantics and then believe that person forever. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to fucking shake that off, dude. You gotta sever that. I had a community like that as well. I made it very clear to the people in my community that like, if you keep doing this, I'm gonna ban you. And then I banned a fuckload of them. I'm better off for it. So just listen to my example. If you want success in this field, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is how you become successful. Blood. This is something that has been acknowledged within the community. Now, I'm really not trying to point the finger of blame in any one direction here. This process has a lot of moving parts. You have the creators themselves, their orbiters, the communities, the subreddits, the forums, the hours and hours and hours of streams, the comment sections where the spiciest, most sycophantic takes are rewarded with the sweet, sweet dopamine of likes and faves and retweets and reposts. And all of it coalesces into one single force field that incentivizes... For the record, this doesn't mean that like, if you see misinformation about me on the internet, you shouldn't respond to it. Just don't attack other people randomly. Because I see this a lot. Like, for example, one of the most deranged communities is the fucking Swerfs, right? The sex work exclusionary radical feminists. They constantly fucking say, uh, oh, Hassan, he fucking uses all of his money to like go to brothels and stuff. Because I went to a brothel in 2010. The brothel was raided. In Germany, brothels are 
legal. And that brothel was raided in Berlin. Artemis is the name of the brothel. That brothel is still in operation. And they, in very bad faith, will literally fucking say, I went to a brothel that was, uh, that was raided for, like, child sex trafficking or whatever the fuck. Like, they just lie. Straight up fucking lie. The brothel was raided for tax evasion. And it was raided, like, eight years after I went to that fucking brothel. How am I supposed to know? Okay, it's a tourist destination that I went to in, like, 2010. But they just fucking lie. They lie and, and you know, they continue uh, with that lie all the time. And I see, every time I see a comment like that, I see like eight fucking people underneath it being like, that brothel was rated for tax evasion. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're lying. Uh, fuck you. Uh, you know, why are you doing this? And I respect that. That's good. That's not a bad thing. Or whenever people just like fucking bring up old drama, like buying a house, like I see people being like, that's wrong. You know, everybody fucking buys houses. You're out of your mind for getting mad about this. So like I said, that's normal. That's healthy. If you want to do that, you can go off and do that. Just don't fucking go and... It was literally rated for trafficking and tax evasion. Yeah, it's really interesting that it's still in operation uh, to this day. And also, uh, not only is it still in operation to this day, but also they ended up countersuing the, the government and they found no, no one got arrested. So what happened there? Like, now I'm just, now I'm just like defending a fucking random brothel. But even then, I don't even fucking know. It's not, it's not my, like, it's not my brothel, you dumb bitch. Why are you bringing this up to me? <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. Why am I defending some random fucking brothel? Hello? Am I the pimp? The time gap thing for any character assassination involving the future on noble events is pretty disgusting. Yeah, exactly. That's the craziest fucking, that's the craziest thing. You're like, literally... It's like yelling at me because I went to a TGI Fridays and then fucking five years later, someone died of like, uh, you know, food poisoning. Oh, okay. My bad, bro. Holy shit. You did this. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you eat onion rings at the TGI Fridays in 2010? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Can you, can you think, can you comprehend a world in which like that's appropriate uh, uh, is an argument to launch? Anyway. Drama farming and misrepresentation. Maybe we could term this the Vosh effect or something. Because I think a lot of times criticisms against him are actually criticisms of this effect. But this energy bounces back and forth between fandom and creator until narratives are formed. And then those narratives are used as justification for all kinds of bullying, harassment, and coercion against perceived adversaries. And given the distance and speed at which these narratives can travel. A lot of times there's enough space between the actual harassment going on and the creators that it's really difficult to hold people accountable. But what's worse is that sometimes you get creators directly calling for the harassment. The moment that you address criticism, the moment that you address psychotic, here's how it works, okay? Here's how it works. You are a psycho on the internet. You're very bored and you want desperately for the creator to acknowledge your existence, okay? So you realize like, if I say something super psychotic in the chat, he will notice it and he will respond to it. And then when I do end up noticing a psychotic fucking take in the chat and respond to it and we move on, other people go, oh shit, that's how I can get the fucking, that's, that's it. That's how, that's the secret. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do the exact same thing that the other person got fucking clapped for. And that's how the fucking loop goes on and on and on. Now, add an additional layer to that where you then go and take that clip to your fucking favorite Swerve content creator or whatever, and then your favorite Swerve content creator makes a fucking video about it, and then 100,000 people watch it, and then boom, all of a sudden, now you have 100,000, if not even more people in the chat trying to fucking continue that same fucking cycle of toxicity then you actually end up responding to that as well and then boom that's another 45 minute video holy shit and this is exactly how this industry works i respond to critics every day no matter how fucking bad faith they are so much so that i have to literally stop responding to criticism because it just becomes my entire content okay dogpiling or brigading of other bro creators. has to defend a 10 plus year old nut exactly dude exactly there's chatters in here that are literally fucking younger or than the nut that i'm talking about if you're familiar with these spaces, you're probably familiar with this approach. Recently, Notice you talk a lot on points that you don't fully understand. Boom. See? Another one. Here's what we're doing going forward. Flapping them. Blammo. Get fucked. Vosh did this to a creator. Some of you may know.
against okay, here I gotta go back maybe to this we again. could term this the Vosh effect or something because I think a lot of times criticisms against him are actually criticisms of this effect but this energy bounces back and forth between fandom and creator until narratives are formed and then those narratives are used as justification for all kinds of bullying harassment and coercion against perceived adversaries and given the distance and speed at which these narratives can travel a lot of times there's enough space between the actual harassment going on and the creators that it's really difficult to hold people accountable. But what's worse is that sometimes you get creators directly calling for the harassment, dogpiling, or brigading of other creators. If you're familiar with these spaces, you're probably familiar with this approach. Recently, Vosh did this to a creator, some of you may know. Her name is Natalie Wynn, aka ContraPoints, Left Tube's mom. In the aftermath of the Vosh, JK Rowling, ironic misogyny debacle, none of those words are in the Bible, Natalie criticized Vosh for centering himself in the conversation on trans advocacy. And then, during his stream, Vosh said this. The thing that really bothers me is, like, is this not exactly like all of- Stop. I'm using this as, ex as an example. You are not being helpful when you say, I see psychos on Twitter call you a sex tourist who continues to go where prostitution is legal so you can buy women. They all think you objectify slash abuse women. These swerves are so insane. I understand that you think this is being helpful, okay? You have seen criticism and you think this is being helpful. You're not. You are continuing to stir the pot. You are continuing to force me into respond to this criticism. So, hey, this is another moment where we are cleaning up the community a little bit, okay? Please do not do this. And chat, do not dogpile on Space Ace. You do it all the fucking time, too of the woke scolds who would reply to contrapoints and say stuff like um are you done invalidating the voices of trans women who have been hurt by your content it's such a shitty presumptuous oh i i gotta point something out here by the way like bosh isn't trans right i don't think he is when, when other trans people tell natalie that she's invalidating the points of view of trans women that's a little bit more uh, disagreeable. Now, as a cishet breeder, okay, I'm not even like gay or bi or pan or whatever the fuck, and I think Vosh is, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm the worst of the worst at this. I've, I've put myself in other people's businesses all the time, okay, all the time. But, you know, this is not exactly a great argument against uh, it, Natalie, even though this argument does exist. It's, a, it's one that I literally launch all the time. Whenever people are like, oh, dude, Hassan, see yourself out of trans people's business. Hassan, see yourself out of black people's business. What do I do? I get mad and I say, fuck you. Suck my dick. I'm not. This is what I've been doing. This is what I'm going to continue to do. If you don't like it, you can suck my, you can suck me. Okay. And I don't like, uh, that, that disagreement regardless where it's like, are you done being mad that some trans women disagree that being misogynistic is actually an intricate strategy for being our savior? I do understand why, uh, I do understand why Natalie and other people said this to Vosh when the misogyny thing happened. Uh, I, I think like, I mean, I think it was like light. It was light. And the problem is like, like he just responded to it and he made content out of it. And when you do that, you just, you know, you, you validate people's perspectives because one, you value, you, you gave validation to the people's uh, uh, opinions about you using misogyny to fucking, uh, defend, uh, to attack a transphobic person. And two, not only that, transphobic people use that all the time as a fucking criticism to be like, look, see how misogynistic these guys are. See how the misogynistic these fucking guys are. Uh, they're, that's why they're uh, trans. Uh, that's why they're pro trans because they're misogynistic. Those transphobic people are bad faith. And Vosh is pro trans as far as I know. So uh, I think the, the criticism should be that, like, hey, listen, as a pro trans person, uh, you know, when you, when, you give, can, when you give ammo to the other side, even though it's bad faith, it's not great, right? If that's your. If that's your fucking POV, then that's that's a, a decent fucking take. And if it's a content creator that you respect and you appreciate, you got to fucking, you know, take it back a little bit and maybe have a conversation with that content creator in your own personal time. I try to do this every now and then when people reach out to me. I'm always open minded to hearing them out. The unfortunate problem is that uh, a lot of people will use that as an opportunity to cut more videos. So the best thing you can do in this situation is just not respond to it. Even if you recognize, just don't respond to it, okay? It's woke scold kind of behavior because you're presupposing, yeah. The more of you are in the replies being like, that's not what's happening right here. Like, this is necessary, okay?
publicly shame her into changing her mind on this. So that's unacceptable. What he did here is harassment. With 7,000 people watching, he made an explicit command to his supporters, telling them to go pile onto Natalie with support for his position until she changed her mind, or, you know, bent the knee, as it were. And lo and behold, his audience followed suit. And shortly after this, Natalie ended up locking her Twitter account and blocking Vosh. Now, I'm not a mind reader, okay? I can't pretend to know exactly what her motivations here were for doing these things. But what I can tell you, as someone who has- I'm trans and experienced trans misogyny too. What Vosh was bad, but people saying trans creator said this equals correct take when shit is nuanced. Everyone wants a black and white answer. That's not as like uh, targeted harassment as like I'm sure that clip entails. I'm sure there's more to it than that. I haven't watched it. I don't know anything about that. I'm sure there's more to the clip. Firing off shit like that, 100% is mobilizing your audience if you are not actively fighting against your audience from going and brigading other communities because even when you do that they still fucking go and brigade regardless but if you're not actively doing that you're creating a space that is is hostile to allies for no fucking reason you have to routinely say it's not okay don't fucking do that i do it all the goddamn time i do it all the goddamn fucking time and yet still Sometimes brigades happen, okay? Gone through what I would consider a similar experience, being dogpiled by Vosh fans. This response does not surprise me at all. In the face of being flooded with massive amounts of undue condescension, I completely understand the decision to go private and block him. It doesn't matter how big your platform is or how experienced you might be, this stuff can really take a toll on you. This dogpiling is one of the things that drove Lindsay Ellis, another prominent video essayist, into quitting YouTube altogether. I mentioned before how Vosh offered me a cash bounty of double. The problem with Noah's opinion on this is that in his original video, he sent a brigade against Anderthal's channel. I'm sure if he did that, he will probably address it or rather say that this is something that I've done as well and that it's a wrong thing and I should be better at doing that as well my ad revenue if I deleted my video. Well, when I did actually take the video down for a short period of time, he made a point to say that while his offer did still stand, it wasn't meant to be like a threat. It was intended as more of a chest beating mafia style sort of bluff thing. It does make me look bad though. It was, it was, it was meant to be kind of like a mafioso chest beating thing, which I only did because I've been sort of compromised. He didn't do that. I watched the whole video. No, he did not Lamau. So why did that guy just lie? Yo, this video ironic- Okay, listen, listen. I'm gonna use another personal example, okay? Because I don't give a shit about the, the Vosh Noah stuff. I don't care. I'm gonna use a personal example. One thing that online communities regularly do is justify the fucking psychopathic actions that they're engaging in. You did that. You did that just now by saying, oh, f fucking, well, Noah did that too. In a video where Noah is- personally talking about how like brigading is bad and like it fucking bullies content creators and is not a good thing and we should be more responsible all of us stop trying to justify the criticisms that are fucking valid okay not about vosh just across the board even my own fucking uh, community as well okay and then once they realize like oh shit normal people actually look at this and go this is fucking really deranged they tried to find a fucking narrative that would justify it what you are failing to recognize is you look like deranged psychopaths to like normal people, okay? <laughs> you're, you're just copium. You're like, oh, so, oh, he's so mad. We got him. We got him so good. Okay, dude. Yeah, you got me. I am so, so mad. You fucking got me. The reason why I'm explaining this is because once they realized people were like really fucking, you know, people were like upset at them, they started crafting a narrative very deliberately to be like, no, actually, the actions that we took weren't just like petty to try to trigger Hassan, who we fucking hate and we've hated and we've made content around hating him for a long ass time. But it was actually for a justifiable reason because he actually attacked first. He attacked us first. Like, no, I fucking didn't. The reason why I'm bringing it up is because it's a perfect, it's a microcosm of the way that a lot of people operate on the internet. Okay. If they can't get positive interactions off of that, like hate raid, then they will turn around and try to make it seem as though they were doing it for a justifiable and honorable cause. It's a swarm. It's a hate swarm. They message literally all the fucking people in my chat and shit. It's psychotic. So I don't want to. And then they get so fucking mad. And they ramp up the pressure. It's, it's really, really weird. Maybe you just suck. Have you ever thought about that?
Look, look at this. Can't defend ideas, Omega Law. Could it defend pixels, Omega Law? Like, maybe you're just like a fucking weirdo, dude, and no one wants to be around you. Like, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, this kind of behavior is very strange, dude. You, you're not. Like, I will never be able to describe to you that you are, def, you know, behaving in like an incredibly deranged way because you're so invested in this. Maybe a couple of years down the line, you look back at the way you were operating and go, wow, that was kind of weird. As, as the chatter correctly pointed out, even if I was like actually fucking super butthurt, super mad, don't you feel like that? I mean, w w what happened to you? Are you, why are you happy about that? Are you just saying that like, I, I made you mad and that's good. Like I made you mad. I made you upset. You, you got me, dude. You really, you really upset me. <laughs> what the fuck? by this you know which in a way i understand i didn't see it as a malicious thing the problem with that though is what this sentiment results in when vosh says stuff like this he might be using ironic bravado or in that in that experience i was talking about destiny by the way in his community um which i really try not to because this becomes like awful every time that conversation takes place like they will literally this will probably be like a 45 minute video about how i'm fucking so mad and so upset or like i don't know using my dead dog for clout or some shit like even though i didn't even mention it at all or that aspect of it in this conversation until just now like i already know you know <laughs> i already know what's going on and listen if you are currently in here if you're watching this as a clip I'm not mad, but if you, if that's going to make you feel better, like I, I can, you know, I can act like I'm very mad. Like, oh man, I'm so mad. Mm, you got me. I watched the channel a lot in the past eight months. D's brought up, D's been brought up a handful of times to check their community like 10 times in that time. Every time they were spending time shitting on us on there says, yeah, there's just like, you know, it's just their content. You have no shame condemning dogpiling when you always send your chatters on mass to subscribe at the top of the hour. So here's a one minute break now or whatever, but his following, when they say it, when they call me a spineless loser that should delete his channel and make fun of me for stuttering and various other bad stuff, they mean that shit. <laughs> These people become emboldened by this rhetoric to act in a manner that might on the surface just seem abrasive, but in actuality ends up being just genuinely abusive and coercive. And much like how each tweet from his fans that went after Natalie all berated her with the same message, that she's wrong with the intent of bullying her into changing her mind, each comment on my video was essentially a copy and paste of his statements with the intended goal of bullying me into deleting it. Not, I'm not liking this floof here. How do I get rid of the floof? Haircut? Is that how you do it? It does make me wonder, like, how much of this is motivated by his fans' genuine beliefs and how much of it is them just following orders. And while the exact ratio may be tough to find, I do know that were he not to make these statements and commands, this dogpiling would not be taking place. It's precisely this effect, the collective Vosh unconscious, that had me legitimately doubting my own intentions with my video. The influx of this type of stuff in the week after its release is part of what led me to actually take the video down for a little bit. If you read things like this enough times, it really starts to get into your head. The combination of them being so confident that they're correct, while airing these feelings of victimization with such condescension, this is what eventually results in people being forced to fall in line by this community. It results in damage control when things come out that make them look bad, and it's a really problematic dynamic. Another more recent example of this dynamic can be found in an extremely long and complicated interaction that Vosh had with the YouTuber Cat Black. To be clear, this one was a mess. As such, I'm only going to look at one specific example from it that relates to what I'm talking about here. I will try to give as much context as is necessary. So, around the time of Vosh's JK Rowling stuff, Kat made a tweet thread asking specifically trans women in her audience about the efficacy of the ironic misogyny Vosh displayed. So, basically asking, what do we think about this? Vosh eventually messaged her about the thread, and they went back and forth. Kat ended up leaking these DMs when she felt that Vosh had misrepresented their content to his stream. So during this exchange, Vosh's community attempted to rewrite the order of events with the goal of discrediting Kat by painting her as a sexual abuser. Their justification for this accusation was that- This is like, dude, th this is what I'm saying. It's like, th this, this is so fucked up, dude. That, that's the kind of shit that is like, I mean, I'm glad that I used the swerf uh, example earlier. Like, it's not good. Not good at all. It, really bad, actually. Don't do that. Especially if you are a fan, like I said, of Vosh, who routinely deals with people that are fucking saying uh, the horrible shit about him. Do you, do you understand? 
Like, that's so strange to do that. What a strange thing to do. That Kat had made sexual comments about Bosch without his consent, pictured here. What this accusation is leaving out, though, is that what she said here was directly responding to Vosh saying this on his stream while referencing Kat. Yeah, Vosh, pretty much exactly what Kat states he's into. All right, are you guys ready for the mildest hot take in the universe? Okay. Super id poll, like lefty black women who are like really condescending to white people in terms of their ability to engage in political discourse love fucking white dudes it's the exact same reason that racist white guys all watch interracial porn to jerk off to it's the exact same thing it's identical there's no difference it's literally the exact same goddamn thing it's true i'm sorry guys people who have like racist thoughts tend to like weirdly fetishize uh like interracial ra Oh, this is definitely a disagreement that I have with uh, Vosh on this too. Like, look, I haven't seen a lot of his videos on this or any of his videos as all, at all. But from what I understand, maybe he can elaborate uh, or maybe he can describe his perspective. But the idea that like uh, anti-blackness from uh, white people and anti-whiteness from black people is actually equal. And it's like, and and you know... I just hate all racism is just basically saying you're colorblind, okay? It's the same energy as being like, I'm colorblind. And it's oftentimes almost exclusively advocated for by white people, even white people in leftist spaces, okay? And I'm sorry, and I know you guys are not going to give me any charitability for this because let's be real, I am, uh, you know, Mr. Crackergate after all, if you are in here and you hated that take. You know, there are historical reasons as to why these are, this is not a one-to-one -one comparison, okay? It might make you feel bad when a black person is like, oh man, I hate white people or whatever the fuck. There is a, there is a historical justification for it. Do people sometimes take it too far? Absolutely. But ultimately, if you're going to make an argument about this or if you're going to have the conversation like this, you have to, have to be very careful and be very deliberate and very specific with the words that you use. And also, once again, recognize the differences, the historical differences, and also on top of that, just the contemporary differences that still exist. I will never, ever fucking debate, okay? I will not. And if you think that that's because I'm a coward or because I cannot fucking, uh, you know, defend my positions, I don't even care if you feel that way. Fine. This entire video that we're watching currently, that I'm watching specifically because I fucking despise the toxic culture that this creates. It's a gigantic waste of time. It is just simply for the worst of the worst types of people on the internet uh, uh, making, uh, making, you know, new clips and, and creating new controversies specifically. And I'm not even talking about Vosh in this situation. I'm talking about the people who watch specifically for the debates to continue the drama. Do you understand? You're doing it for them. And I don't want to give it to them. I, I don't want to celebrate them. I don't want to fucking, you know, make them, uh, make them get away with the type of content that they want to create. And again, I'm not talking about the content creators themselves. I'm talking about the watchers. Okay. You know who you are. Race shit for like probably reasons they should be more critical of. So neither of these things are good, right? Weird, sexually charged, invasive race play fetish rants are bad. Body shaming and leaking DMs are also bad, generally speaking. Her reasoning for leaking the DMs justifies the leak, in my opinion, but that's just me. However, while people can argue back and forth about which of these is worse, the point here is that the offensiveness of what Vosh said was almost completely ignored, while the offensiveness of what Kat said has been singled out and used as a line of attack. I'm not making a comment about which is worse. We shouldn't do either, but the point stands. Especially given that her tweet is directly responding to this invasive rant from Vosh. He said that stuff first. There is a different standard being applied here by this audience of people, and that's bad. Also, what's important to note here is that Kat later acknowledged her mistake in making this comment about Vosh in a tweet thread, but did Vosh acknowledge making any mistakes here, like talking about her in that manner on his stream? I don't know, and I have no plans of watching a 7 hour stream to find out. Maybe he did, but based on how his community still calls her a sexual harasser to this day, I have my doubts. And okay, so another that's crazy bro that's crazy we we all gotta fucking clean up our shit okay i mean that's that's wild 
Another thing somebody might say here is, well, Noah, doesn't your video encourage people to dogpile onto debate bros? It does paint them in a pretty bad light. Why is what you've done just considered criticism, but when we do it, it's harassment? And the thing is, you would be right to ask these questions. I'm willing to acknowledge that videos like mine contribute to this culture. They create negative impressions that can lead to dogpiling. It took me going through all of this to realize that this is one of the responsibilities of having a platform. And it's something I plan on taking seriously moving forward. You can't control what everyone does. Where's that chatter? Where's that chatter? Someone give me the name of the chatter right now that was like, hold on, we're, I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna find that fucking piece of shit. That little limp thick motherfucker who was like, HA! He, he's not! He's dogpiling! He dogpiled in his video! And I was like, if he dogpiled in his video, he probably will acknowledge it. Alright, let's hear it. Four months subscriber. I hope you're still in here. I would like to hear from you, please. It would be far more helpful if lefties weren't battling each other. The right is banned together on culture wars. The problem with Noah's position on this is that in his original video, he sent a brigade against Xanderthal's channel. We need to stop indoctrination of the multiplication of, and division. There was another guy who said Noah doesn't acknowledge it too. For the record, there is a difference. I'm not going to ban him. There's a difference between... Because uh, I'm in a good mood. I don't want to fucking create more haters, okay? There's a difference between like, you know, calling out certain things that are harmful overall or making videos about it versus in an incredibly bad faith uh, manner, clipping shit out of context, trying to fucking swarm someone, trying to get them to fucking respond to uh, your content and like your bad faith attacks, specifically so that, you know, your content creator daddy can make more fucking blood sports uh, videos and eventually uh, draw you in for a debate, ultimately to continue down that same fucking pipeline of, of making more content even, you know? making more content about it. It's just like, it's incredibly self-defeating. It's a, it's a horribly toxic cycle. And if you guys want legitimate and genuine conversations, and I, I say this to all the hate watchers that are in here right now, a lot of you will probably never even see this because, you know, this part will get cut, this part will get cut out of the hate videos that are going to inevitably come out of this. So let me say it one more time. For all of you who are in here watching, okay, for all the hate watchers, if you've arrived at this part of the video, good job. That means that the person who put this part of the video in is either not operating in like super bad faith or wants to show that they're not in super bad faith. So here's what I will tell you. Okay. If you want your content daddy to be able to interact with other content daddies, okay, if that's your parasocial desire, then stop behaving like a psycho because your actions as a community member for your parasocial uh, content daddy is making people not want to interact with your parasocial content daddy. That's a big problem. And this goes out to my community as well, for the record. Okay. People often say, oh, he never mentions destiny because he's afraid or whatever. No, I don't mention him because he makes videos. Every time I fucking mention his name, they may, he makes like a 45 minute video. And then that same spiral and that same cycle of fucking psychos come back in here every time there's even a minor mention of anything that is tangentially related there's a 45 minute video cut out i can't deal with that it's just fucking crazy it's crazy and the community then you know feels like that's dope that's actually sick that's what i want this is the brigading part of the context but i mean the full video is there it's it's a full video you you can watch the whole thing also if you do go there don't say anything mean please just comment squid gang with six G's. But that's all I really needed to say about that guy. That's the brigading? This is what the chatter was talking about when he said this is brigading? That's because literally every time you mention him, it's an attack on him. Do you not expect him to defend himself against attacks against him? Brother, I do not, okay? I do not. You're a 10-month subscriber. You're literally a 10-month subscriber. Like, you have to understand this a little bit better, okay? There have been a million fucking instances where I could have made like actual, like a fuckload of, let me, let me take you seriously for a second. Destiny has been involved in a fuckload of controversies of his own doing, not even like moral outrage. I'm sure that there's certainly moral outrage, uh, uh, fabricated because people hate him at this point. Like people despise him, but he personally gets involved in shit all the goddamn time. I regularly do not fucking talk about it when that shit happens. I know that you're going to find like anything and everything you can. Now, going back to all the VODs to find like an instance, a single fucking instance 
of like uh, even a mere mention or an or something that I alluded to, okay, to specifically turn around and, and make this into like a, a larger thing, which is the our place drama example I gave over and over again, which is you in your never ending desire to justify your deranged and pathological behavior. Okay. There have been so many instances where I could have just like piled on and I didn't because I don't want to, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I just don't want to be a part of that. Don't go there. Don't mention it. I don't fucking care. You are bringing it up for no fucking reason. Stop falling for the bait. Your chat is getting more and more toxic hostile. What the fuck? It's because brigades are occurring now. Okay. That's why online obviously but you can take steps to be more responsible so something like making it clear to my audience that if they're going to comment on someone's work who i'm criticizing don't do it unless you're going to be constructive or at least not be a dick but my video's lack of disclaimers is so much different than Bosch actively weaponizing his audience against other creators dogpiling them and coercing them into getting what he wants and i think that difference is worth taking into account and despite this difference, despite the fact that my video essay did not explicitly call for any public action against Vosh, as he's done here, I do recognize that it still could have had the same effect. Which again, is why, not just for streamers, but video essays too, and really everyone on this platform with a large audience, we need to be more responsible, especially when we're dealing with people who don't have our same level of protection. Now, I do want to be clear here, once there was some communication between Vosh and I, once he was at least aware that the video I made did not set out to attack him unjustly, this condescension died down. After around this time, as far as I know, he didn't go out of his way to stir up drama on his stream. The wave of these comments slowed. Also a war started, so that could be part of it. But I didn't do that, so I would never do that. I, I hate war. He addressed our conflict on a recent stream and did so in what I felt was a fair manner. Chad is becoming more toxic because he's literally addressing this problem. The increase in toxicity is just proving his point. Exactly. Exactly. And it's happening already. It's happening currently. Noah Sampson. I don't think that he's dumb. A lot of people in my community have said that he's dumb. I don't actually think that. I think that snark, when applied unwisely, can often come across as dumb because it gives the impression of uh, a, a sort of confident ignorance of a subject. You know, we'll see how things play out with him. And I genuinely constructive criticism. Not doing debates so you don't cultivate the type of people who watch debates is the exact reason you should stop hyper focusing on toxic chatters. You're cultivating an audience who bait you into going off on them. One million percent, you're right. Thank you. That is actually very good constructive criticism. Thank you, Chatter. You are 100% correct. It's something that I am working on actively to stop. Straight up. You're right. One, one million percent. One million percent. Even though I'm subbed, I love that you've never had your chat on sub mode only, no matter how toxic it gets. I mean, there's instances where we actually do have to turn it into a sub uh, only, but you know, only when it's like a super, super big brigade happening. I do appreciate this, but there's just, there's something missing here if I were to just leave it at that. Because while I'm willing to acknowledge that in our direct interactions, Vosh has been fair to me, what I can't look past is the way that through the mobilization of his community, he has caused harm. Not just to me, but to other more vulnerable people. The As chatters, you're not going to want to see this because like this kind of uh, gets into like chatters and their fucking behavior actually having an impact. Some chatters will not care because like their whole purpose is this to get this kind of reaction out of a human that they despise, right? When you do actually do this, when you brigade people, like you end up gaslighting them, you end up changing their fucking point of view. Like, sorry, Lord, forgive me, but I'm about to be honest on the internet again. Okay. But when stuff like that happens, you end up literally doubting yourself because that's all you're seeing. All you're seeing is like fucking hate filled uh, comments about how much you fucking suck and how stupid you are or whatever the fuck and all it it doesn't take too much it takes like 30 people to like say it 30 people to brigade you uh in a in a positive uh whenever like someone is seeing you in a positive light and that does have a that does take on a mental toll for sure and uh unless you quite literally you know stop log off touch grass meet people in the real world who are like it's hard to get out of that. Great example of this is when um, the the Hassan Abihead was spotted wearing the the unionized merch tee, 
at the uh, the Chateau Marmont picket line. And then another chatter was like, hey, I, I actually spoke uh, about organizing, you know, grocery store workers in my grocery store. And I gave an interview at a local news show, uh, a local news uh, you know, program wearing the unionized merch as well. And I, I and I was reminded once again, like there's plenty of fucking members in this community that like uh, I have helped radicalize that I have, I've, you know, I've done my job and played a significant role and gotten them on the pipeline to, you know, engage in leftist organizing in their communities. And that's the ultimate goal. Right. And I often forget that because like, I am so constantly, uh, barraged with like, uh, you know, people saying I'm a fucking piece of shit. I end up doubting myself. And that is the point. That is the goal. That's the that's the biggest W you could ever get as a hate raider. I, I acknowledge that. <sighs> you know, I try to very, very uh, desperately not uh, see it. And, you know, I think I'm getting better at it. But bother you because you're, their perspective frustrates you? Or is it because they're twisting your words to reinforce their cognitive dissonances? Uh, both. All of that. All of the above. The interesting part about this content is that, like, this is a back and forth. I very deliberately don't have, like, a sub-only chat. I very deliberately only have like usually a 10 minute follow mode in the chat, right? Because I want to foster that conversation. I want people to like who have genuinely interesting uh, and, and, and genuinely curious, actually curious, not just curious Andes, but like actually uh, differences, differences in opinion that want to learn, okay? That are curious, that are charitable uh, to come in and, and be like, hey, I, I don't really fully understand this. Okay. And people take advantage of that. People take advantage of that and make the stream about themselves and about their own personal project. And it's really fucking annoying. It sucks. Backlash has been exhausting for me. I hit a low point during the weeks following my video's release, which was the lowest I've been in a long time. But the thing is, no matter how bad this experience might have been for me, ultimately, I've had it easy compared to others. And there are a few reasons for this. I am someone who already has a decently sized platform. I have a base of online support, and from this, direct material stability. I do this full time and I have the freedom to take breaks when things get heavy. What's more is that I am also afforded certain protections that a lot of other people are not. I cannot be attacked in the same way that marginalized creators can. With the weight of actual discrimination and persecution compounding on top of these attacks. With the attacks themselves being capable of levying transphobia, homophobia, sexism, or racism, of attacking people for who they are. They can't do that to me. What this means is that there's a certain amount of deferential treatment going on here that I think is worth exploring. The deferential treatment in this case being from the communities that are motivated by Vosh's actions. If you want an example of what this deferential treatment looks like, all we have to do is look at what happened to Professor Flowers. Professor Flowers released a video last week that goes over her experience of dealing with the backlash from debating Vosh. In it, she describes how difficult it's been for her to get back to making videos. It's taken her over six months to do so, and one of the reasons for this is the racist harassment that she has experienced. And regardless of how you feel that she portrayed herself in their debate or in any subsequent videos or streams, this is something that should be unacceptable. I do recommend that you go watch her video. I'll leave it linked in the description. No, oh, fuck this guy. This guy's full of shit. Okay. One of the most frustrating parts about this whole thing is the fact that even by just mentioning her in this video, I have to contend with the what? fact that I might be reigniting some level of harassment against her and any of the people I mention. And that's just really shitty that that's how this has to be. I did get her permission to include her in this video, but the fact that I felt the need to ask, I think, says something. Anyways, let's look at one example of differential treatment from her situation. So, this is a thumbnail from a prominent Vosh Clips channel featuring an image of a photoshopped black Adolf Hitler. The video that this thumbnail is on is a segment from Vosh's debate with Professor Flowers. The video is titled, Vosh owns a black white supremacist in this debate. It has been deceptively edited to make it seem as though Professor Flowers says things that she doesn't say. This includes a moment where they make it look like she calls her own father an oppressor because he's white. Many viewers took this at face value, commenting how messed up it was that she'd talk about her family like that, even though she never did. The account admits to having done this, but says that it's it's fine, because according to them, she probably believes it anyway. This is something that should be unacceptable. And before you say that it is, that this sort of behavior is denounced, and that members of Vosh's community are purged if they're found acting in racist ways, the channel has 25,000 subscribers. This is more subscribers than Professor Flowers herself has. Professor For the record, again, um, 
not just about Vosh, but there are there are entire like there are entire fucking orbiter communities that are cultivated off of this sort of stuff that 100 percent like there are their reddit is literally them just doing the thing which is sad which is because Vosh said he didn't want to engage in drama anymore or encouraging it for their entertainment yeah that's it you nailed it those are people who are not Vosh fans they will not be Vosh fans for long they will not be they're just fans of uh they're fans of blood sport it might come across like Vosh fans, but they're not actually Vosh fans. They're just fans of Vosh tearing people down. And the moment that he doesn't approach, he doesn't do that, or the moment that there's another person that does that to Vosh, they're gonna fucking move on to that person. They're gonna say, "Hey, take it from someone who's been there." You know, they're gonna say, "Hey, I've moved beyond Vosh. He fucking sucks." Okay. After all, a lot of them probably came from Destiny's community. And they moved on to your community. They moved on to my community, and then they moved on to your community. Why do you think they did that? And why do you think it won't happen to you? And if you keep feeding that beast, what do you think will happen? There's always going to be another fucking dude that takes advantage of your weaknesses. Especially tuning in, can you explain whatever Vaj is? He's just some, he's a content creator that is like, that... Uh, engages in debates. Professor Flowers tweeted a screenshot of this thumbnail, which made the rounds. The video itself has 25,000 views. And I'm one of those people. I had an anti hgw phase and everything. I'm trying to improve, to be honest, but really don't know where to start. I mean, where you can start is recognizing that you had an anti hgw phase and then, you know, completely stripping yourself of, like, those prior fucking uh, takes and attitudes you had. Hold subscribers on. Subscribers than Professor Flowers herself has. Professor Flowers tweeted a screenshot of this thumbnail, which made the rounds. The video itself has 25,000 views and a 98% like to dislike ratio. And Vosh follows this account on Twitter. They know about this. They just don't care, or they don't see the racism. And I'm not really sure which one of these is worse, but I think both should be unacceptable. A related example here of this sort of differential treatment is with a creator that I mentioned earlier, Cat Black. Now, in the past month or so, following this interaction with Vosh, Cat has mentioned how she's experienced racism from white leftists even more than she's seen from racist white conservatives. Now, for context, Cat is someone who's been around on YouTube for a long time, since 2005 to be precise. Goober Noah for scale here, this is me in 2005. Hello! Technically YouTubing, so that's cool. But my point is, Kat has been doing this for a while. She was on YouTube at the height of the anti-SJW wave, through all the reactionary and alt-right stages of content creators, and she's still uploading today. So when she makes this comment that she's received, quote, way more shit from white leftists than she does from racist white conservatives, immediately following this conflict with Bosch, with his identity politics arguments being spat at her online, well, that's something that should probably ring some alarm bells, no? A similar sentiment was expressed last month by Professor Flowers during another wave of harassment from Bosch fans. She wrote on Twitter, I've literally experienced less racism growing up around white conservatives. There seems to be some sort of pattern here that may be worth noting. I don't know what it is, but it's super crazy. Oh my gosh, how'd that, what happened? I don't know. One of the ways that Bosch and his community operate that serves to control the narrative is by outwardly and loudly condemning condemning harassment when it is made public. I remember tweeting a screenshot of some harassment I received on Reddit DMs from a Vosh fan a while ago. Members of his community, like mods, immediately came in and sort of made a display of the fact that the person harassing me had been banned and that they didn't tolerate that type of stuff. And while I'm inclined to say that this is a good- Like all those fucking mods are from here. Most of them, if not all of them, okay? Or other communities as well. There's one other community that they're probably from, but a big chunk of them are literally from here. And now fucking despise me. Uh, and, and, and that continues to, to fester the, uh, you know, the, the toxicity, the, the back and forth nonstop. Good thing that this is what is supposed to happen. At the same time, I can't help but wonder, why is this still up? Obviously, they know about it and they haven't done anything. And my guess is that when it comes to people that they've collectively decided are okay to punch down on, people like Professor Flowers, then there's no real incentive to crack down on this stuff. When the people at the top have signaled that being mean and dogpiling the bad people is okay, then why would anyone say anything? If it's not advantageous from a PR perspective, then why bother? 
A related point here, and something that Lua brings up in her video, is that examples like these really make you wonder just how much racist shit goes on in these spaces unchecked. How many so-called leftists from this community have felt emboldened by Vosh or any one of his orbiters to pile on to Professor Flowers? And how many of them are going to get away with it? How many of them will say years down the line, oh man, that Professor Flowers drama was, was really crazy, right guys? It was fun while you get away with it. How many of them will say years down the line, oh man, that Professor Flowers Flowers drama was was really crazy, right guys? It was fun while it lasted though. Meanwhile, you know, six months of racist harassment that almost resulted in Lua quitting YouTube and worse. And that just really doesn't sit right with me, you know? And I hope it doesn't with you either. I hope this causes you to wonder like, hey, why does stuff like this only seem to be a problem when people shine a spotlight on it? Are we okay with this sort of deferential treatment for marginalized creators just because it's been greenlit from the top? These are things that I feel like we should be thinking about, but I don't, but I don't know. But I don't know anything actually, so don't. Don't listen to me. So time has passed, right? A lot of times I see shit about you and whenever I feel like responding, I take a step back and realize it has no bearing in my life. What others think about someone I watch for entertainment. I feel like that should be the de facto attitude towards content creators and things that improve a lot. I mean, listen, man, if people are fucking lying about me, you can correct them. God damn. Like, don't be toxic. <laughs> and as I said, things have mostly calmed down for me. Not but I saying still want to speak. You know, let people just fucking slander me on the timeline. God damn, dude. This is why I get no fucking defense, okay? This is why whenever other way more active communities of like deranged psychos fucking decide to come after me, I got nothing going on. All you motherfuckers are too busy like looking the other way. Like, mm, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're on your own, bitch. Fucking do you. Don't be normal, be a little abnormal. Not just because it has been exhausting, but really because I know I haven't seen anywhere close to the worst of it. And that genuinely worries me. It worries me for the people that may experience this without the protections that I am afforded or without the support base of being somewhat established as a content creator. It saddens no one's me gonna for dox the people you, bro. who Chill. have already gone through it, people who I know are just trying to do good with the odds stacked against them and being nearly driven off of the platform because of it. I really don't want to see that happen to anyone and regardless of your opinions of any of the people that I mentioned here, I hope you can understand where I'm coming from when I say that. This video is not a personal attack on any of the creators that I've mentioned. All of this does stem from my concern over mistreatment in online spaces, and thus mistreatment in any form in my name is don't do it, okay? Okay, here's here's the here's the real take. Are you ready? Wow, I can't believe Noah Sampson got his back blown out so fucking hard that he embarrassingly had to delete his fucking video only to re-upload re it once again and also is still crying about this. Oh my God, you're still crying about this. You took the L, just take the L, just take the L, just take the L. The top of the hour ad break is upon us. And if you no longer want to take the L from the top of the hour ad break, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's right. Motherfucker, I got you. Yeah, exactly. Suck me, okay? Here, here's the woman abrick now. No, but like, I know so many fucking people are just going to watch this whole thing. They're not going to watch the whole thing. They're just going to come into the comments and be like, you fucking suck. You fucking suck. You suck. You took the L so fucking hard. Fuck you. You took the L. My intellectual debate lord daddy destroyed you. He ritualistically embarrassed you. He thoroughly dismantled all your terrible ideas. And guess what? You couldn't cope with that. And that's precisely why. You, that's precisely why you made this other video also slandering my intellectual daddy. And I'm sure that's what's uh, probably already happening. And I'm sure people will attack me for even fucking uh, watching this video. Hassan is too afraid to debate Vawusha. And that's precisely why he had to fucking watch someone else attack him. What a coward. What an intellectually dishonest person he is. Fuck him. Debates is how you fucking... Debates is how you defeat people in the marketplace of ideas. It's the only way to arrive at the truth. I'm not being a toxic, sick fuck. And if that's your take after all of this, delete your channel. Delete your fucking channel. If that's your take after you watched all of this, then, you know, you can't really fucking, I can't save you. No one can. Maybe one day I could just sit back and uh, hope that one day you change your ways. You see the, you grow up, you get a girlfriend or something. You go to the gym, you know? Like the other chatter, I don't want to contribute to the toxicity of the online arguments. So when I see people lying about you, I just start agreeing with them and actually start personally spreading those lies myself out of solidarity. <laughs> Fuck you.